So today we're going to be taking a look at what watches are in my personal collection. Since this video was recorded about a week ago, it's already out of date. So I will do kind of like a follow-up video when I get my new piece in on that one and kind of what I traded and sold to get it. But let's get into the video. I thought it would be sensical to kind of go in order of when I got the pieces. So yeah, let's take a look. And this is one of the very first watches I've ever had. This was my dad's Zodiac Sea Dragon. Basically, he's a guy who never really wears a watch. I mean, I gifted him an Apple Watch a couple years ago and he wears that religiously but he never really wore a regular analog watch. And I don't know why he had this. It always sat around in a change drawer. It got quite beat up, quite scratched up, but I just love the color scheme of it. I loved the sizing of it. It's a little smaller. Um, so I really just gravitated towards it. And one day I started wearing it and I didn't stop. And I did forget to mention, this is the Zodiac Z02218. Here we have it on my 6.5 inch wrist. I think it wears really well. It has a really short lug to lug distance. So it fits in between the wrist really nicely, not too thick, not too bulky. Just a nice, really vintage styled watch. This watch is one of the first watches I bought myself coming out of high school. It is a watch I've literally bought, sold, and then rebought because I just had to have it again. It is a gorgeous piece. One of my favorite dive watches, just bar none and love the color scheme, love that mineral bezel to it, love the color play, love the white outer ring here. Just a really, really nice, fun watch. So my dad's model was a quartz. This is an automatic running on an STP movement. Not the best movements in the world, but gets the job done. Overall, I just really love the look of the watch. This is currently on a watch gecko shark mesh. I think it really complements the dive watch theme to it. And yeah, it's just, is definitely a pretty nice watch to look at and a perfect watch for summer. I will say there are a lot of watches that were in between that watch and this one, but the one that has stayed is this Bulova 96B206. It has this really, really nice smooth sweep to the seconds hand, but it's a quartz movement. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. It runs off a of battery, so you don't have to worry about setting the time, changing the time, and it's just really nice with this kind of cool gray dial. Uh, this bracelet is from Long Island Watches. I forget which brand it is, but you can find it on there. And yeah, it just is a really cool watch. And as you can see on my wrist, even though it is quote unquote a 42 millimeter watch, it does wear really well. I think overall it looks good on the wrist. Again, the reason I bought this watch was one, at the time it was only $150. It's now discontinued and hard to find, but it's a great grab and go piece. You don't have to worry about it. It has that really accurate movement, really nice sweeping seconds hand. And I just really wanted a gray watch in my collection and this kind of just fit the bill. One of my favorite watches basically in the entire world. This is my Timex Snoopy. And the reference number, for if someone is really interested in getting it, I believe it's 2W2R41400. And yeah, this was like a watch that cost me 45 bucks. I got this watch after I already had a couple pieces. I wanted a fun piece that was just kind of what I, it sounds like, a piece that was just fun to wear, fun to have. I didn't have to worry about what value it had on it or anything. But I was honestly very, very pleasantly surprised when I got it in. Is it the most well-built watch in the world? No, but the actual depth and coloration to this white dial is actually amazing. Uh, if they would have not put Snoopy on here and just put a 12 minute marker and some other random Timex text on it, it would be a killer, killer regular watch. Uh, I do really like liken this watch to a kind of almost cheaply done enamel. It just really is a really nice white, really good color temperature to the watch. And overall, I mean, Snoopy isn't that badly done either. And there we have it on my wrist. Uh, this red strap from Archer Straps is just really complimenting the red accent in that Snoopy hat right there. Really lovely watch. I believe this is a 38 millimeter Timex Weekender, so really fits well on my wrist. And of course, you got that Snoopy Indiglo, so can't beat that either. Next, we have this Humism Rhizome. And this watch, I just got it because it was so interesting. I, I believe their kind of slogan is turning time into art. And you can just kind of see the way those discs move around create these mesmerizing patterns. I believe this is $300 at retail. So it's not an absolute crazy amount of money. It has a Seiko NH movement in it. So it, you know, that classic automatic workhorse. So 
it will last you. It's just a beautifully interesting design. You're getting this watch because it looks so cool. And yeah, that's what really drew me to it. The dimensions on this case are of course on the smaller side, which I love. I think it fits really well on the wrist. Again, it's just really, really interesting to look at. It literally is kind of an art piece. It just is something interesting. It's not perfectly made to tell the time. I mean, this is the hour hand, this is the minute hand. You can get it kind of a rough approximation, but overall it's just something that's kind of cool, a conversation piece, something fun to bring to watch meetups and whatnot. And I enjoy it for what it is. Next in my collection is this Undone Urban. And basically I got this watch because I just really wanted a pink watch in my collection. I love this kind of tone of pink. I think it's really hard to find a pink watch out there. I mean, Anne Urbane does one, but I don't love the colors on it. Uh, Seiko has their 34 millimeter pink presage, which I did own, but it wasn't pink enough for me. So this is what I ended up going with. And another benefit is I was able to get my channel logo put on the back here, which is just a pretty fun little detail. Uh, so yeah, I really do like this watch. It's a pretty good size. I have this strap, which is like a pajama style strap from Nick Mankey that goes along with the color really well. Here we go on the wrist. Again, this pajama style strap is really, really comfy. Um, I, technically, Nick calls them uh, hook style straps because it's hooked on by a hook, but that's neither here nor there. I think the watch fits comfortably within the bounce of my wrist. The pink color is just great, very fun, very summery. I mean, I love wearing this with either, you know, very light blues, even dark blues. It just pairs well, especially with blacks too, it just kind of pops out. So it's a, just a fun watch to have. It's no, by no means high horology, but overall it's a decent watch for the money and that little customization factor of the case back was enough to make it worth it for me. Next up we have this Visitor Linden and Visitor is just one of those brands I always loved. I met the owner a couple years ago at a micro brand event. Ever since I first saw Visitor online, I always wanted one, specifically this Linden model as well, even though it took them a couple years to come out with it. And for me, it just has one of those best black dials I've come across. It's literally this beautiful inky black, which is really hard to almost convey in this video. And I would have to get it in some natural lighting and something like that. I mean, on my uh, Instagram, you can kind of see some better uh, photos that kind of capture it more. But oh, right there, you can kind of just see how inky and black this dial is, which is, I just love. The handset is completely unique. The watch is just unique. And yeah, I really like it. I think you can see it just wears really well. Uh, it is on a smaller size at 39 millimeters, which I really like. The overall design is just funky. It's quirky. It's cool. The actual lugs are inspired by the tines of a fountain pen. So if you just took those tines and spread them apart, you literally get this lug profile. So it's just like all these little details that just come together to create such a really, really cool watch. Next up, we have a watch I pretty much bought on a whim. I saw it on, I believe, Reddit, and I just was like, hmm, it looks interesting. I remember seeing it a couple years ago in a Facebook group. I think maybe I'll like it. I didn't expect to keep it. I expected to maybe do a review on it and just, you know, pass it along. I haven't even gotten the review out yet, but I love, love, love this piece. It's quickly become a favorite in my collection. It has that beautiful enamel dial. Uh, sorry, I didn't say the reference. It is the Sard 007, but this Seiko is just so awesome. It's, it's unique. It's not a Seiko reference you see very often. Not a lot of people have it. Not a lot of people even know about it. And I just love the way that enamel dial plays with light, the little sunken subsections it has for all those registers, the shape of the spade hour hand. Uh, it just is really, really cool. And the way the black just pops against that white dial. Here we have it on my wrist. This is a nice seatbelt NATO from Veblenist. I think it pairs with the watch really well, just plays off the black tones. And uh, it just is an awesome watch. I think it fits nicely. It can work in dress environments. It can work in casual environments. The plain white and black monotone nature of the dial helps it fit with just so many straps. This is an awesome watch. And if you've ever thought about getting one, you definitely should look into it. So this is one of those watches I kind of bought off whim. I saw it online for a good price and I couldn't pass it up. And again, I was kind of looking for a good black dial watch. The visitor fits that bill perfectly, but can't hurt to add a couple more. And this is the Credor GCAX975. I believe this reference is about 15, maybe 20 years old. So you're not gonna really find a lot of them on the market, but it is a great size. Um, it just looks really cool. It's distinctive from anything else out there on the market. 
beautiful black dial that sometimes leans brown, has a nice sunburst to it. Really, really nice fine link bracelet here. And yeah, it just is an awesome watch. This is a quartz movement. I have no problem with shelling out a couple, you know, either hundred or even thousands of dollars for a quartz watch. I mean, my first luxury watch was a quartz Grand Seiko. So this is an awesome watch by all means. You can just see it wears really, really well, wears really, really close to the wrist. It's a super comfortable watch, super interesting. It has a case shape unlike anything else out there. It is just a fun watch. And for the price I got it for, can't really complain at all. And definitely it was probably a keeper in my collection. Staying with that black watch theme, we have the Zodiac Sea Wolf. White Wolf, uh, reference number Z0-9208. Now, this was a limited edition done by Topper's Jewelers. Basically, I bought this watch kind of on impulse because it's been sold out for a long time. It came up on the forums, and I just really like the look of it. So I thought, you know, I love my other Zodiac. Might as well give this a try. And I'm glad I did because I really, really do like it. As you can see, they're completely different styling from my other Zodiac different case dimensions, just different everything. So I think I'm able to justify having two Seawolves in the collection. Again, compared to my other Zodiac, this is smaller dimensions in every direction. So it wears a little bit better, not that the other one wears bad at all, but this one is really comfortable on the wrist. I love the monochromatic nature of it, how like starkly contrasted all those white elements are. A side note, this is actually a Beza Rice bracelet from Baltic that just ends up fitting these Zodiac cases really, really well. And yeah, this is uh, definitely a watch that's gonna stay in my collection. So here we have the Seiko SRPD 37. This is also known as the Seiko Mockingbird. And basically I got this watch because I wanted a green watch in my collection. Uh, green is my favorite color. I didn't have a green watch. I had tons of green straps, but no green watch. So I just took the dive into this one. Kind of hard to argue with a beautiful Seiko Passage dial, just how much detail goes into these, how much value you get for the money. It's just ridiculous and I'm happy I got it. Here it is on the wrist. This is actually a canvas strap from Archer Straps and I think you can see, I mean, even though it is a 40 millimeter watch, I don't think it wears badly on my wrist at all. It has a pretty constrained lug to lug. So overall it just wears really well. Again, that dial really is just the star of the show here. Goes from this nice, very, very dark green to these really bright hints of lighter green in there. So yeah. Really happy with this watch. Moving on to my Grand Seiko SBGA 407, otherwise known as the Skyflake. This is a watch I wanted since it first came out. You can watch my video on it for a little bit more detail, a little bit more in-depth look into the watch. But overall, it's just gorgeous. It has that really nice pale blue snowflake dial, that beautiful texture. It has spring drive, which you just can't beat the sweep of that. Uh, this strap I have it on right now is a nice, I believe they call it frost gray suede from Veblenist. Just a really, really fun watch. Grand Seiko is just, in my opinion, producing some of the best stuff out there in the modern watch world. I'm happy to own this one and yeah, I, I, I just do really enjoy owning this piece. And last but certainly not least is my JLC Reverso. I've wanted this watch for a very, very long time. Uh, not this specific version, I always wanted a duo face, but when I saw this come up for a pretty good price, uh, this is a quartz version of the Reverso, I decided to go for it. I didn't know how I'd feel about having two hands instead of no running seconds, but I think this is the Reverso for me. I don't think I'm gonna go for the duo anymore. This is just kind of simple, plain. It just is a Reverso. It is classic, it is an icon. So. I do love this watch. It is the last watch in my collection. It's my most recent watch purchase. And yeah, it, it just is awesome. Thing on the wrist, you can see it just fits me perfectly. This is one of those watches I just always wanted. I tend towards dressier stylings. I'm not afraid to wear a dress watch casually. And this is gonna be no exception to that. Specifically, it was hard for me to find another one of these quartz ones that had a beautiful kind of texture to the middle dial. And you'll see more of it in the macro photos in my, uh, or macro videography in my actual review for this piece. But man, it, it's a gorgeous watch. I'm really happy I finally pulled the trigger on it. And yeah, that's the last watch in my collection. 
So I hope you enjoyed the look into my collection. If you have any comments, you know, leave them down below about maybe what I should sell, what I should definitely keep, anything you think I should buy. Uh, I don't really know where I'm going right now. Uh, I usually kind of always have a kind of watch on the horizon that I'm thinking about getting. And right now I don't really have one. So suggestions are more than welcome. There are a couple brands I do want to take a look at. The Fierce Brunswick Blue I almost bought recently. There is the Anordane Model 2, which I'm really, really interested in seeing in the flesh. And there's this beautiful, like, adventuring dial watch from, uh, I'm going to say this wrong, but it's like Lunde Blue or something like that. Uh, really, really cool kind of boutique kind of brand. It's like, I think, four grand. So it's, it's definitely not a cheap watch, but it really is pretty. Again, don't know where else I'm going yet, but hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in another one. Thanks for watching.